I don't know how disruptive she's going to be. She's just sitting right here. She's just like not happy. Every time I start, try and start, she'd start having a fit. So anyways, we'll see how this goes. Um, there's a bunch of things. There's a bunch of things I want to say. I want to say again, like I am seriously thinking that uh, within another, I bet you by the end of, let's see, what is this? This is Friday. Friday, and it's supposed to be between the 7th and the 8th. That's what Alexa says, that we're going to go into some kind of shutdown or something on the 7th to the 8th, at midnight, going into the 8th. I don't even remember. You'd have to ask if you have Alexa. I don't have one, but I keep seeing all these people do it. There's bunches of people doing this video of it. And, um, and then I still know there's something, something with the 11th. There's all this stuff that is all merging. And, um, uh, so let me think if there was anything else I wanted to say. Cause I'm really, really, uh, stuck on this. Now the minerals and the elements that we're made up of. And as we start becoming depleted through this life of chemicals that we think it's called aging when really we're dying right in front of each other because we are dissolving from our, um, but it, you know, we have a, we still have a storyline. But as we are progressing through evolution, these are the things that we have to see. These are the things that we have to notice. And, um, you know, and on the hair thing, I knew, like, I know that there's a bunch of people out there who color their hair, people who listen to me who color their hair, people who wear makeup, who do all that stuff. I'm not trying to create minions. I'm putting out my opinion. And it's been my opinion uh, the whole time. I mean, I've been saying it for a whole time. Like I never, I w put, I wore makeup back when I was like um, 13 and I think 13 to 14 or something like that. And then it uh, made my skin so bad. And I was like, oh my gosh, makeup sucks, man. And then um, anytime I put it on, I just don't like it. And then, um, the hair, like I did uh, streaks in my hair for years and years. And sometimes they'd get real heavy and then you have to go back the other way. Like I did that all the time in my hair. So, um, you know, it's everybody's got their own process. I'm not telling people you have to go and change. You have to do that. No, you have to. It is about gathering information. And this is just my opinion. You can go do the research or not do the research. You know, it's up to you. When you run across somebody's opinion and it triggers you, it isn't definitely not me trying to say, well, this is what you have to do. I'm saying you can improve your health. And then if it is real stuck on like, well, I, you know, I can't go unless I'm like have this color or something that makes me happier or whatever. That's up to you. That's up to you to decide, you know, it's between, you got to figure out what, you know, between your health and, you know, what your image so, and that, and this is the time we're at. So these are the kind of triggers that are going to happen. These are the kind of triggers that are supposed to happen. We're supposed to be triggered into looking at things like, well, what do we really think? Well, if it's this and this, you know, which, which do I want? So, but anyways, I'm not trying to, you know, um, create, create a cult or something. I'm just somebody who's spreading my opinion. And my opinion is a lot different than a lot of people. And, um... Uh, but on my own with the, uh, the gray, because I, I liked it. Like, yeah, when your hair is a certain color or whatever, you become like, and identify with that, you know, especially if people are always, Oh, I love your hair. Then, um, I, and I was not expecting it to be a, a bit, uh, to go so quick and to even be so dramatic. And uh, so I was thinking it is, um, that's what got me going on all the mineral. And that's based on all of my other reference. What the, uh, this, this depletion of these minerals that are aging us, that we think that we're aging, but we're really dying because we're depleting ourselves of what we really need. And the signs are in front of us, but our unawareness and trusting the medical system, this created up of a, a flock of like-minded zombies that the only concern is uh, greed and money. And so it is, um, you know, I, I think that, <sighs> whatever, you get where I'm going with it. So uh, anyways, on the hair thing, 
I am going to keep talking about, uh, it's because it's tripping me out when I go in. It's like, I haven't been able to do that in so long. And that be, this has been all white. And you can even tell it's like a little lighter. This is really the biggest strip right there that's left. And it is, and it's still, even when you see it, this weird light makes it look a lot whiter. It looks a lot more like my hair is lifted like a couple of shades. Like it's kind of just streaks or something. Like this is a heavy streak right here that is right there. It doesn't look white in the uh, in the mirror. So I don't know. I think it's a reflection of this light. But I have not had all of this. All of this now is um, back to original. Well, not back to original. I mean, originally I was, you know, blonde haired little kid. Now my hair is darker. But anyways... Um, for it to be going so fast and stuff, uh, it makes me think about the, the whole aging process and the minerals and all that stuff, the elements and everything that we're made up of and the importance of taking them. And so on this one, um, cause I had another realization is the vitamin D too, cause you have to take vitamin D to activate the magnesium. So you take the, um, uh, so the, I, I drink out of the copper thing. So I fill the copper cup and then I let it sit overnight. And then the next day I fill my cup. And so then I drink the water. It's already copper, you know, it's already, uh, elevated water or whatever. And so then, uh, drink that. And then I take a magnesium pill and a vitamin D and then, um, I, when I was up there looking, I found this bottle of zinc that I had too, and a bottle of oxygen. And so I've been putting those in my tea along with that acyic tea stuff that I just got yes the other day. So, but I am feeling like good. Like I do feel like it's like reversing aging or something. Like I I don't know. We'll see. Because I'm really curious to see how long this takes to all completely be gone. It's like every morning I get up and go in there just like to see if there's any left. And um anyways, uh you know, that's my opinion on this whole aging thing. But my color, my opinion on the hair color has been for a long time. I've ranted and raved about that such a long time. And what I even said about the 80s when they started pushing so hard on all that color stuff on hair. Because I have always known that your hair is your antenna. Oh, I, I just knew that. Like, there's so much stuff that I knew as a little kid that I didn't even realize was significant or important or anything. It's, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm definitely seeing a lot of things as I open my eyes to, like, things I knew as a kid and stuff that, I don't know, people still don't know. So, um, uh, let me think for a second. Because there was, um, there was a girl who I was seeing on TikTok a couple years ago, and she is a conspiracy theorist kind of girl but she leans into the spiritual side but not this super spirit stuff but just there's this other spiritual thing that has to do with aliens and uh you know we're all just souls and we're all in different aspects of the universe and we're doing our roles and stuff like i don't i don't know there's other people think like they're punished they're in prison and I uh, didn't choose to come here and all that stuff. I don't, I don't know about all that, but the, um, but so anyways, uh, the spiritual thing is a big, uh, a big scale. What is that called? A spectrum. It's a big spectrum right now. And so where everybody is on their beliefs, but anyway, so she had blue hair and, um, I kept thinking that she would be receptive when I told her that the colors were damaging her antenna because a lot of people want to be more psychic. A lot of people want to be more connected. And so I said, it's, um, it, it, it disrupts it when you damage your antenna. I mean, just think of any kind of animal or something. If you damage their antenna, then that is, um, you know, going to interfere 
with what it's supposed to be connecting you to. And so it's a, a, a form of disconnection, why I think they push it. And so anyways, um, you know, she kept doing her hair blue. She didn't stop. I mean, she may have thought about it. I think now, I think she's going off of that hair color, but I don't know. I haven't, I, I haven't seen her in a while. I don't know what fucking TikTok is so weird with their algorithm. Like you're, you're following people and then all of a sudden you don't see any of them. And, um, so anyways, I don't know what the hell I'm, TikTok is so annoying. Um, it, but I had a trigger yesterday too with this, um, some lady, she never had commented before and, um, she came in and left me some comment telling me what I needed to do spiritually and I needed to, I don't know. It sounded like love and light teaching, you know, like distract yourself, take yourself to your happy place. Don't feel the world. Then you are of the world. Don't whatever. And, um, so I was triggered. It's like, oh my God, have you ever even listened to anything I say? And probably, you know, my attitude towards the stuff we wouldn't be in alignment. <laughs> I have a different attitude than the love and light people. And I look at life different. And then a lot of these spiritual people. And anyway, so she comes in and says some, you know, thing to me. And, um, you know, I was triggered and I was just like, okay, just ignore it. Just blow it off. But it keeps going in your mind and in your mind. And so you keep going through, okay, why is it bothering me? What is it? You know, all that stuff as you process through the trigger. And then I reached the conclusion of, if it was bothering me, is uh, that is intrusive. It's like, you know, I'm putting my message out there. Like anybody can go in and just listen and go off of it or whatever. I'm not coming and knocking on anybody's door. I'm not going into someone's comments and saying, well, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. I don't think, I don't know. You can correct me if I've come in and, you know, but I feel like it is if somebody asks me something, I would say, but that I was like, but this person, I didn't ask them. I don't know them. They're not familiar with my stuff. I think that that's very ego minded to think you know what's best for someone else. Or especially when somebody tries to tell me spiritually what to do. It's like I'm connected to my own. Like I spend so much more time in connection with my spirit than most people have any. Like it, it, I would seem like a crazy person to most people. So, and then for somebody to come in and tell me I need to go and disconnect from my pain or my sadness and go into like whatever it was. And I was just like, this is not something I asked for. I don't know you. I don't care about your opinion. And you are coming in all, you're not, you're coming in and giving, you're pushing something. You're what you think on me. You're approaching me. It's not the same to me. Like other people are approaching me for what I have to say. I'm not going in and going into other people's stuff and telling them. So anyways, I just, that's how I had come to my conclusion where I was like how I felt about it. I was like, yeah, I'm not asking you for your opinion. So that's just what I went in and said. I was like, you know, I remember asking you for your opinion. You know, why do you feel you need to come and give it to me? You know, I, I is so ego driven in our society to feel like whatever we think, whatever we feel about something that somebody does, that we need to go in and tell them what we think about it. It's like, why? 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 It's, it's your, it's what your stuff, it's your opinions, it's your, how you feel. So, um... Whatever, but I'm not saying, you know, don't come in and comment and say how you feel or whatever. But, you know, I, um, you know, I'll say what I think back, you know, that's for sure. <laughs> so, um, and you know, what's so crazy too is, um, well, we're in this Arctic blast or something over here and, so we got this Arctic blast coming in and it's cold. It's cold. I'm supposed to get way colder over the next few days over the, when they are supposedly going to put out the heat or all the power. Cause I had said something to the girl across the street about the seventh and the eighth. And she said, Oh, it's supposed to get real cold those days. I hope it's not going to be, hopefully it's just the internet, not the power. 
And um, I was like, I don't, I don't know. But, um, and, and so many of these dates come and go, but I know we're closing in on something. I mean, it's not going to just keep going and going and going. No, we're closing in. Every time where it's just like we'd hit into a roadblock, it's something else being exposed. But we're running out of, I mean, we're going faster too. Everything is moving faster. So, you know, one of these weekends or one of these days, things are going to happen. And I had just seen this video of, um, the Mayan predictions. And so it was seven Mayan predictions of what they said was going to happen. And, um, I downloaded the video cause it was on TikTok, and I, I don't know why it won't let me just share the video. And if I just share the link, nobody's going to go in and push it and look at the links. I'm just going to share it in the shorts, but it's not a video I made. Somebody else made it, but I'm going to share it anyways. I used to share a lot of different people's videos to kind of, uh, to kind of give other, other people. So when they would listen to something, I would say a lot of times they would be like, Oh, this person, cause I would hear other people saying it. And then I would share videos like, look, I'm not the only one saying this stuff. <laughs> like there's other people saying it, but, um, then I got, uh, consequences from YouTube for that. So I'm always like, Oh man, but this one, I don't see what they could tag in it and make a, a guideline against me. But anyways, I'm going to share it. And I was like, God, oh, listening to it, I was like, ah, oh, man, maybe I was Mayan. I don't know. Because I just like, I know this stuff as I've been, um, I don't know. I don't know this stuff. And so the, um, in the seven, I don't think I could say them all exactly. I don't remember, but it's all the same stuff that I keep saying. And so they said that we're going to go into, because we already went into the time of change. And so it is um, these two differing paths. So you choose the path of compassion and love, or you choose the path of fear and, um, what was it? Fear and uh, something. And um, so the two paths, and you can see. But see, people, I think this, 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 when the things flip, that's where you're going to see people really choose their path. And most people, I think, are going to see differently. They're going to go towards love and compassion. But it could be the people who are left over go towards love and compassion. And that the people who choose fear, that that's where, you know, that takes them out, that they go. But both things, so in the Mayan thing, it said both things are ways of learning. It's not like one path is better than the other. Both paths have significant lessons. That's what I've been saying. So both paths matter. And so there's not one right path or wrong, one wrong path. So it doesn't matter. Each soul, and this is another thing they said, each soul needs to, each person needs to learn to go within because you have all the answers inside of you. I keep saying that and saying that. And, um, and that's why even anything I say, the triggers, you got to always go inside of you, what you think, what you believe. Just, you know, we're always going to hear things that uh, trigger us, always. I mean, that's just a part of communication with people. Oh, and our communication is going to change. And one reason violence is going to go away is because people are going to be so connected. You won't be able to hurt somebody else because you'll feel it too much in yourself. And um, we won't need the same. We're not going to have the same with money. Our ideas of materialistic stuff is what frees us. So this period of time where we're losing things and stuff is really a time of freedom. The things were being taken away from us. We're starting to realize, oh, we don't need that. We don't need that. So it changes our priorities and how we look at things and what we desire and what fulfills us. Because this this chasing a dream, this chasing this carrot that is trying to become something you're not is the the challenge that over that over is overbearing to people. It is what brings people down. It's what gets them to feel bad about themselves, to feel like they're not good enough and stuff. It's because they're not just living their lives. They're out there chasing something, feeling like, well, if I have this and this and this, then I'll be successful, then I'll be happy. It's like, that's not where happiness comes from. Happiness comes from peace of mind. Happiness comes from being honest. Happiness comes from being vulnerable and being able to be true to yourself. 
So when you're fighting against yourself, that's where you're going to feel dissatisfied. That's why so many people feel so dissatisfied in life because they spend so much trying to hide who they are, thinking that something's wrong with them because you wouldn't hide who you are if you didn't think something's wrong with you. So everybody goes around trying to hide themselves, fear of rejection, fear of somebody else judging them when judgment doesn't matter. It doesn't, I mean, the people who judge people to the point, because we're learning from judgment is when you cross over into judging and thinking that you know what's better for somebody or that you think they're not good enough or something's wrong with them. That's when you've crossed over into another part of judgment where you need to learn your own balance, where you need to be able to pull it in. But to have awareness of how other people are living and have an opinion on it shouldn't interfere with somebody else's way of life. You should be able to continue how you want to live and continue your desires without the influence of somebody else's interference. And that is your own mind trying to connect and please somebody else. Because if you can let go of that, then you can live pure and true to your heart. So it's, um, it's a valuable lesson, but it's a part of the lessons that we're learning right now. And so in the Mayan thing, it talks about that. It talks about that we're about to go into this period of time of the great mirrors where everything that you will only be able to see yourself, you'll see yourself in every relationship. You're going to see yourself, your own behaviors. You're going to, it's going to be highlighted. What have I been saying this whole time? And I have been saying when this, when the tables turn, that is going to be the most profound because so many people are making decisions and doing things and they aren't living their truth. They're not being real because they don't even know. Like there's people who are so nasty and so of the dark, but it's like that they don't realize that they're of the dark until they see the light. The light will come in and then they'll realize they're in the dark and that will be the part that is going to be, you know, hard. That's going to be the dark night. That's going to be when they have to face their dark selves because then they have to see like, oh, wow. I was like that. I was doing that. Like, why? Why was I being this way? Why was I doing that? It's because you can't become a product of your environment. Because if you are in pain and suffering, it brings out other parts of you. And that is what this period of time of evolution is so that you can get an opportunity to see these different parts of you so that you can clean it up, you know, wax up the vehicle, you know, and get yourself back to shiny and new. It's a rebirthing system. It's a pro, it's a pro, uh, it's a, what is that product? Uh, it's a, a it's a, like an ability to be able to, it's an ability to be able to defeat your programs, to be able to move past and find into your own truth. And so, um, it was talking about all this stuff with the Mayan calendar thing and the being able to move, um, into this new period of time where we're not going to have the same thing about money. We're not going to have the same thing about the things that we even want and the things that we want to buy. I bet you a part of it too, because I've been thinking about this and thinking about this because, you know, you have your whole home set up like your little doll house and, you know, you've got all your stuff and everything you love. And then we're all being run out by storms. Oh, that's the other thing too. or seven of them. But one of the things too was the storms and the, the resetting of the, planet which is go so going on japan this morning i was up a few hours ago and they had another big earthquake that was bigger than the last one and uh, there's so much going on in the ring of fire in the pacific and then we got this cold front coming in and there keeps being these big drops of the tectonic plates and see that's what's going to be the thing that's going to is when the guy who the edgar casey guy was explaining about japan he was saying that it was going to the tectonic plates underneath japan are going to just suddenly drop and um and so it's going to just go and that is like what's going to go over here by california and yesterday um Oh, yeah, I was on here when the ground started vibrating yesterday and there was explosions. But then they started doing some project over at the construction thing that was just explosion, explode. Like they started pounding on something. And I was like, I swear to God, when they come over and start doing that, they are trying to mask for something like like the government could even send their own people over there. OK, this is the perfect time. Yeah, they want these developments around because it's a perfect way to mask all the sounds. I think that there's definitely stuff going on down in the tunnels and shit like that. And so the, um, but the tectonic plates 
are shifting around so much and like these other land masses are coming up and then other ones are going to go down. And that's why I said there's going to be a bunch of people that will die all at once together. And it's just these mass things that are going to be real sensational to, you know, to the rest of us where we're all going to be like, oh my God. But that is what brings us all together. We come together through all of this. And he said too, or the Mayans said that there was going to be this big comet. And this is something, you know, because we got Nibiru it's out there and stuff. And they keep trying to cover it up in the sky. And then they even had put out that Netflix movie about Don't Look Up. And I just saw somebody explaining about a bunch of stuff out of that movie. And I was like, oh my God, this stuff. The absurdity in this stuff was so crazy. But, um, so the, my foot's going to sleep. So the, um, so the, this comet thing that they are saying that this big comet comes and, um, and we see that could be like number is creating all of this, uh, this impact because it, it but it's all cycles. See, this is what you got to think of. It's all cycles. There's no, this it, is always going to happen. And so the shifts are what it, it comes from these things. So these things have to happen to create the shifts. And so the this Nibiru coming is uh, what is creating all of the storms and stuff, the unsettling, the pushing, confirmation, making things to change to become different. But it's going to be changing all the land masses, like I said, like Edgar Casey has said, like the Mayans have said. That, um, so the landscape, but it's going to bring us into this period of time that is super spiritual and harmonious. And they said that, that everybody's going to break away from uh, uh, religion and um, some, it, there's going to become a certain movement towards a certain kind of spirituality. They said there's going to become a, a spirituality that is like a certain t like teaching or something. And so everybody will go like, follow these certain practices. So all be kind of similar, but it will be, um, it will be coming from inside of us. Like we'll all be a lot more tuned into what's inside of us and a lot more, it's just going to be a lot more peaceful and calm and people are going to be a lot more free to live the way they want to live. There's going to be a lot more, uh, experiences available to be able to go out and see places uh, our, I know the way we move and they were saying too, the way we communicate, we're not going to need like phones and stuff because we'll, I guess we're going to just use telepathy, but I had heard that, you know, a lot of times too, that we're going to go towards telepathy, but this is the period of time. See where all this is occurring. All these things that are happening is what pushes these things to occur. Like this money collapsing, this all this landscape changing. And over here, we know is going to be very impactful. I mean, Japan's going to be gone. I think like the Philippines, Indonesia, a lot of these places are going to be gone. And um, California, like all the ring of fire, this whole place. It's like these tectonic places and they're moving a lot. Like it could go on today. Anything could happen any day. And since I'm over here, you know, i got to pay attention. And, you know, the... um whatever's going to go down. Like if the ground start, like when I just saw the footage of the eight, uh, the 8.01 in Japan, it, it went on and on and on and on. And it was just shaking. Like it, it, the whole thing was just, and the people were trying to first, they all started diving under tables and stuff. But I think they're taught to go outside and get away from buildings. And so they, um, then you see their kids jump up because this is our fancy house. So it must have cameras around in the house. And then the kids jump up and all go running towards the door and run out. But a lot of the footage I've seen of these earthquakes of the people are outside and they're watching the buildings fall and stuff. So in, in like in California, what they teach you to do is go into a door frame and stand in a door frame. And, but over there, they must do it different. But no matter what, you have the possibility of anything collapsing on you and things falling on you. Because whatever's supposed to happen is supposed to happen. If that event is supposed to take you out, it's going to take you out. doesn't matter what you try and do. But the most strangest thing can happen. And that's why we always have these things where it's like the strangest thing happened. You know? Because, yeah, because you're leaving. You have a set time 
that you're leaving the game. So no matter what, you're going out. And no matter, you know, what weird thing has to happen, you slip in the shower and you hit your tooth on the thing and it jams your tooth up into your brain. And so, you know, whatever it is, it's always going to happen because you have some kind of an exit that you have to, you have to, um, the pictures and the words don't go together, but like a line to it. It's like an appointment. It's like a, it's like a, like I keep seeing an invitation with a time on it. Like that's the time, that's the time. And so you have a set time. And um, so, um, but I want to talk more too about this um, Miami thing. <laughs> because it's so wild. When you see the footage of all the cops. And so then I've heard all these different people. Some people say it's 50. Some people say it's 60. Some people say it's 70. Some people say it's 100. I don't know. So many cop cars. It's like every single cop car that they must be in Miami is at this uh, uh, mall. And for every other thing for any kind of these things or anything there's never this many cops that come to anything and so that right there is absurd and they all come and then the story that they're pushing because it's got to be absurd everything's got to be so absurd i can't believe the absurdity of stuff going on right now it's just like it's so wacky but um so they are saying that there was kids in the mall who were fighting with sticks and setting off fireworks so that they needed every single cop in Miami to come for these teenagers who were, you know, causing problems at the mall. And which, you know, it seems like it would be mall security would just be getting them and holding them until the cops got there. But anyways, you know, all these cops, the whole uh, Miami force has to show up for this, uh, these teenagers uh, being out of control at the mall. And so um, then all these people, because there's all this footage. So uh, one of the, one of the things that people keep saying is like if all these people at the mall then why aren't we seeing tons of footage of what was going on in the mall with these kids like why is there no footage nobody is there's no videos but there's six or eight people who do have videos of these six to eight, or i mean um seven to ten foot creatures i think mostly they keep saying it's like seven i'm pretty sure it's like seven eight nine ten foot it could start at eight because it seemed like it was three different sizes that they were saying. But anyways, giant, giant, huge creatures that are chasing people. And there started being a shootout inside where people started shooting at them. Like, fuck, Miami, they just carry guns around at the mall and stuff. Like, fuck, that's crazy. And so that they are, um, so there's this, you know, going back and forth. No, I mean, not back and forth. It is the, the humans are trying to defeat these big creatures with um you know all, all they have ammunition whatever whatever they got and so there's six or eight different people's videos of people who got this footage who saw this and they keep sharing it trying to download it, it keeps uh, going up on reddit i guess and then people keep trying to get it but it keeps going down. No matter where it goes up, it goes down. They've got it covered. Like, they do not want people to, I don't know, probably there's a sense of fear, but like, come on. Go on the news then and start fucking fessing up to your lies. Stop Stop with this. Because, uh, I mean, like the creatures, the creatures, the, the other beings and stuff, it's already been like, they're going to be seen. It's like, time is up. And I, and it makes me think too, is it kind of like that the, it's not like aggressive how the like Galactic Federation or whoever is saying like time is up, you've got to, it would be more of like the time is up, the time, the cycles are going, you don't, you're running out of time. And so, um, cause this cataclysm is, I mean, we're already in the process of it. There's already places that are splitting and so far, well, there has been some, bad disasters who have killed a bunch of people because over in turkey i think it was when they had that and they had that big earthquake too that split was that turkey i don't even remember where it was because this has been going on for a couple of years but the um but right now i don't know if i'd even finished saying about the saudi arabia the other day that i had seen because the desert turned into this lush greenland oh it was like two in two days 
So it looked one way, and then the next day it looked a little different, and the next day it was like this lush greenery everywhere. And, and then also I just saw footage where they're having a flood on one part, and whatever is flooding, it I don't know what it is. It is weird. I don't know at all what it, it is. I, I don't know. It almost looks like a, a washing machine flooded or something. I don't, I don't know. It's weird. So whatever's on the ground that's flooding, it looks scary. Like I wouldn't want that to get touching on me. It looks like it's some kind of chemicals or something. So I don't know, but it's huge amounts of uh, the same thing as there's, there's like a mud slide, I think, in Japan. There's all sorts of, all this stuff just keeps going and going. Like, and it's just going to keep going. There's so many of these different events and stuff. But especially over here at the Ring of Fire part, where there's so much with this tectonic plates and they're going to collapse. And so if they, I mean, that's a, that's a big sign to me. That they had a 7.5, that then they had the tsunami. Now they have an 8. And then right just in between while all this is going is when I saw the Edgar Cayce um, video guy talking about all his predictions and saying what was going to happen in Japan. I just saw that the other day. And then it's going to the tectonic plates under it are going to collapse. So it's like, you know, it seems like they are. And then that's going to be a reverberation because what I've been saying is all a, rever a reverberation under there. And there's something, and I don't know if it was the Mayan ones, but it's like it's collapsing from the center or something. But it is, um, you know, that's reset. It's just to me, it's like the earth has got to, the parts that we've been abusing and treating bad for so long, it, it's, like, it's like when you're laying in your bed and you've got parts of your skin, they're showing, and then it's the, those parts get super cold. So then you pull over the blankets to get those so that they can go move into like a different climate. And then maybe you put your legs out so that you can still cool off. But then, um, so you, you're changing the land mass so that you have, a, you're changing the different parts. That's like what the earth is doing right now. It's the parts that are overrun, overdone that they are going to go back under the water and then she's going to put up these new parts that we're going to go in and start uh, building. But we're going to be different because we're going to be more in harmony. We're not going to be going in trying to gut the planet and take everything from her. We're going into this time of peace and harmony. And I have been seeing so many different videos too of other ways to build houses that are not so, um, like building things out of... Um, uh, clay, clay houses and stuff. I, I think there's other things that are a lot more, there's, I, I just think there's going to be a lot of things that are going to change. Like, I don't know that we're going to just go in and, I mean, you could go and find where, you, you know, you find like an Amish village or some village that kind of, uh, characterizes or, or follows that kind of thing and you know they'll go in and cut down trees and make their own wood and go in and help and make their own buildings and stuff but I think there's going to be a lot of different kinds of things a lot of different kinds of like villages and towns and stuff that will go to different communities I don't think it's going to be all a set thing just like now like if you go from state to state you go, because this is something I found living in a bunch of different states, like down south in Texas, all the houses were brick. Even in Kansas, um, there was brick houses. Like, I don't remember as much because I was so tiny and even going back, it's like I haven't even been back to Kansas in so long that they could have a lot more houses with siding. But in Texas, it was bricks, bricks, bricks. Everybody had bricks house, brick houses. Then I went to California and all the houses were stucco. And I was like, well, this is weird. What the hell is this stucco stuff? So everybody's house was stucco. And then um, and then I came up here to Washington and everybody's house is, is made out of siding. And I, so I think there was some siding in Kansas, but I was like, man, that is so weird. The houses are so different. Even if um, there's some that follow like a same kind of trend or style like, it's kind of like, 
like in the 40s, there was a certain style that a lot of people built or in the 20s. But see, we're going to go back to that craftsmanship too. Like I, I just saw these people building this clay house and they were even sculpting in the house. It was like so cool doing these sculptures on the outside of the house. And they were talking about the, um, uh, what is that called? Because there's catchphrases when you're doing stuff that's super green, super good for the environment. I can't think of what they are. But anyways, that was um, one of those kinds of things. Like, it wasn't just going green. It was something being more in harmony with the planet or something. And so the clay is good for that. And it was explaining about that. But I've seen other ones too. I can't think of all the different ones. But I have seen like this wave lately of videos that I've gotten about these other kind of houses and other ways to live. And I keep getting this one and it's from over here somewhere. And it's um, tree houses. Like you can go to this place and stay up in their tree houses. And it looks really super cool. But see, I think there'll be whole villages. Like where everybody will follow like that trend. Like they'll go there and be like, oh my gosh, I went to this little town and it was so cool. And everybody has tree houses and everybody lives this way and that way. And that would be the draw where somebody would go like, man, I'm going to go and live there. I, I love it. And I think that is where it's going to be. I think it's going to kind of be where there's certain people that inside of them that their map, their roadmap is designed for this next part. Like it's inside of them to know how to build communities and stuff. Like like everybody has these different things firing up inside of them. And so there's a whole group of people who are here for that role. Just like there's a whole group of these people here who are the disclosure ones who just nonstop all day long. It's like they just got to sit there with their megaphone saying the same stuff. Where to me, I'll look at it and think like, oh my gosh, what has got you so stuck? Why can't you move past this fear? But to me, I also know that that is a part of it. That they, that is an important role. We we need those people. We need these people who are stuck like that because them to keep saying it and to take the abuse they take. Like I was really surprised on that criminal, um, the one girl at Bold Glamour, because you know she can be she can be where I would be like, man, she can be nasty. She seemed like. A lot of times she seems like a girl, like you go, you know, you're out drunk and you bump into her. And this is a girl, you know, like you'd be looking for trouble. Like you would not want to mess with her. She seems like that kind of girl. Like don't fuck around with her. And so, um, and that's why I said it's so weird when she puts on this bold glamour. And then when she starts like changing her personality kind of to match and stuff. It's just funny to watch this whole thing, like as people are trying to figure themselves out through all this stuff changing. But um, I, what it was surprised me is when she was saying that about the, 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 all the information that was just released. I don't want to say a bunch of those words, but you know, all of the stuff that everybody was hanging on the edge of their seat, waiting for this information to come out, and they're all scurrying through it. And I was right. There was a lot of people who were, all they wanted to do was see uh, on both sides. How many times Donnie was in there? What was he doing? So you had half the people who wanted to say, I told you so. And then half the people who wanted to say, I told you so. And so it was both things. We're both looking for the same thing. But so um, she was saying, you know, I told you. And he didn't do anything. And But the people in the comments and how rude and nasty. So these people who are out there disclosing and trying to move, you know, wake people up. In that kind of just beating it. Like I just saw another one. And I haven't seen him in a while. And he's been doing it too for years. And he just is beat down. He's frustrated. And he's just like come on you guys. we got to see. you got to catch on. So they're playing hard roles. They're definitely playing hard roles. And um, But it is a role. And it is still a role that they will have their own repercussions. They will have their own consequences. They will have their own things that they will have to look at and see for the role they played. We all will. But um, anyways, that is, um, I just couldn't believe because I don't know, it could, it could trigger some people though. When somebody is like more rude or, or something, it, they think, well, I'm going to go tell them, you know, fuck them. And so then they want to become confrontational. It's like, eh, I don't have the energy for that. I don't care about that kind of stuff. I don't care about proving anything to 
somebody and it's like, go figure it out for yourself. And even yesterday, I got a message from somebody who said, you know, this person was on there and said, yeah, but all these people are going and saying that there's nothing. But I had heard that years ago. I had said that years ago when people were telling me. I said, yeah, but I saw an interview with the DA and they said he's the only one who came in willingly and told everything that he had to tell. He was the easiest one to work with. He was one, you know, he would do anything that he could to help. And he wasn't hiding anything. And um, that, the, you know, this is the media trying to pin everything on him. And then there's all these people who believe it. It's like, well, you wouldn't believe it if you're paying attention in the world, you know, but they're not. But, they, but they're living their lives. It's just their lives are so structured around control and being misled. So it's not like really living their life. They're living this fake life of a matrix. It's like, and it's so controlled. But, um, you know, they said something and I said that back. I said, yeah, but they're uh, saying that he didn't do anything, which I already knew. And then, um, so then they laughed at me, like how ridiculous I was being. I was like, I'm not going to argue about this. Like, I don't care. I really don't care. Like, whatever. I'm all hung up on this stuff. I don't care about it. And I just am looking for the things to be moving. That, you know, because I'm always trying to gauge, like, how much longer is this going to be until we get to the good part? <laughs> like, I want to get to the good part. And um, so I'm trying to pay attention to, like, okay, well, this is moving. Okay, we got this going. Okay, we got to be getting closer. We got to be getting closer because it's going to be with that big, that big abrupt turn where everything is, like, and it can, it can be like the Mayans were saying, it's going to be the comet is going to be the thing that turns everything the other direction, which that goes in alignment with the don't look up here movie. And we do have something out there in the sky that seems like, man, and I got the footage of it by Italy. Like, I don't know if somebody doctored that or something, but it's like, looks like it's seriously about to hit into our planet or into our land mass or whatever you want to call it. And so that could, I mean, shake things up. It could change, you know, that it could be why the power goes out. And, you know, I don't know how it's all going to play out. I just know that certain things are going to play out, that the money is going to change, that it's going to crash. It's, but everything will be free. So it's not going to be like you're going to need a job and stuff like you did before. It would be much more about you need skills, skills that you can go out and do and trade and get things for, that you have stuff that you are your own currency. But there's still going to be money and stuff to trade. There's still going to be like silver, gold. There's going to be real things. And there's going to be, um, I just heard somebody else saying that there's going to be a set amount of money that people get every single month. So you will also have money in your account every month. So you have money to live off of, to do things. But it's not going to be the same kind of overfilled, overly consumption, gluttony, buy, 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 more, more, more. That's going to be a big, abrupt drop. Like the people who are still in that gear, like, and they're going in that gear, that is when it, when things turn, those are the people who are going to really be affected by the hardness of the turn. Some of us, you know, we're experiencing the hardness of the turn right now, like with every little fucking crash that we hear in our houses or anything. It's like, oh, is this it? Is this it? Like every time the power goes, oh, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Like some, you know, we're headed for this big change. And over here too, you know, I know that this coastline is about to change. And to me, I'm like, uh, you know, sitting here and thinking like, I've got to make a plan to get the hell out of here. Oh, because this is what I was thinking too. It's like, so we all have our little houses, like our little doll houses all set up with our lives and, you know, our created uh, environment. And then uh, for the water to come in and take it and take away all of your things and stuff, all the things that you thought were so important are suddenly gone. And that is huge lessons. And I've learned this lesson several times. And it is impactful every time because it will hit you different every time. Like when I've lost all my things or I've had to get rid of things or whatever in order to downsize and keep making my life smaller and smaller and get rid of things that are important to me and then get, um, you know, downsize and downsize. And then um, 
what was the other one? Because I've had the how my houses taken away from me, and uh, I've just been in this period of time of loss, loss, loss. And then um, when the iCloud and Apple took away all of my photos, all of my memories for the last seven or eight years, that was like, oh my gosh. But that was a big lesson that they were telling me was like, this is stuff that you don't need to hold on to. It's like, it's an attachment. It's like where we anchor in. You don't need that stuff to remember. You need to be able to develop this to remember. And so um, don't get hung up on thinking that these material things go. The only thing that goes with you is you. And so your development of you goes with you. But none of the stuff that you spend time trying to accumulate goes with you. And so I think there is going to be a significant impact on a lot of us where, you know, we have to leave everything behind and move forward. And I think it's going to happen to a lot of different people. There's going to be a mass wiping of what everybody has. But it's kind of just because the, the lesson is to learn that you don't need that stuff to be happy. That none of that stuff was what was making you happy, but it's a process to go work through that. And that is where you really need your, uh, uh, your connection to your guides. You got to be connected to your guides so you have this communication because they tell you things. They help you. I mean, I can't think of a, of a bad thing that's happened where they have communicated to me. And because sometimes I've had to go through bad things. And feel alone where you don't have communication because they have to let you go through some things by yourself. And, but then when you get your communication, it always it gives you such insight that it you, you always, to me, I always feel better. I always feel like, oh, yeah, that is a, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, that's what. And everything is about changing your perspective, about changing how you look at things, how you see yourself, how you see others. And that perceiving, like the perceiving of things are happening for you is huge. Because that's the two different timelines. When things are happening for you, you're meeting the challenges. You're going forward. You're excited. You're in love with life and in love with everything that happens. And wanting to see, even though it's hard. Like, I mean, it's not like I'm in love sitting here thinking like, Oh my God, I can't wait until this earthquake happens and my whole world just falls apart. Oh, it's not like that. And then when I sit there and go like, well, where am I supposed to go? Like right now, Montana is about to get hit so hard. And uh, with this storm, it's like, man, there is no places. And then I keep seeing these people who are the van living people. And oh my God, they are going through it. Ugh. Like uh, vans breaking down, getting stuck in storms, all sorts of stuff. This one guy, he's broken down and he's stuck out there and is in a snowstorm in just this van. And his van won't even run. And uh, so, um, you know, people keep sending him things. Like, he keeps going on because people keep sending things. And that is one thing I have totally noticed, too, is, um, I mean, it becomes people's job to be in crises. There's so many fucking people in crises just cash out me, cash out me, cash out me. Like you could just sit there all day long cash outing people in crisis. It's just one after another. And it's overwhelming. And, uh, you know, but I know is a part of everybody has to figure out how to save themselves. Everybody's got their lessons. No matter if I sit back and I think, oh my God, that's treacherous. That's horrible. I wouldn't want to be going through that. Oh, what can I do to help? It is like, but it's their lessons. It's their stuff that they're supposed to be learning from. It isn't meant for us to just go in and rescue people. And, but there's lessons behind all of it. Because there is so much cash apping going on. And people trying to rescue people and stuff. It's all part of the process. You know, it's um, part of what people have got to see in themselves and for themselves. And then plus, there's probably, I'm sure, some that are connected. That that was where they were supposed to intersect. They were supposed to see each other online and help one each another out because you have these soul connections. Like uh, I've heard some really cool stories from stuff. Oh, and the, you know the one lady who was always talking about Steve and this guy who she uh, from uh, kindergarten or something. 
who kept coming back into her life no matter where she was. She'd be in a different country, in some bar, he'd come walking in. She'd be in some other country years later, he'd come walking in. Like their paths are always were crossing. And then she um, said it was so weird because a girl at her work had just gotten engaged and got engaged to the guy. And he came back into her life then. And so then she had been talking about and talking about and people were so intrigued by the story. Like you have all these people saying all these different opinions about it. And um, uh, to me, it's like a soul connection. Whatever it is, it's a soul connection. And so she, um, so she had done an interview with him. She had him come and talk. And so she had an interview and asked questions and stuff. So then him and that girl moved. He went to go start a different job. And so he had uh, left a message or last thing he had said to her was, I'm sure our paths will cross again or something like that. And so um, he's been gone for a couple weeks and she um, got a message all of a sudden on Instagram or Facebook or something. And it was from some friend of hers that she talks to all the time. And she said, um, oh, I'm just asking blah, blah, blah. You know, I wanted to see how you were. I just ran into your old friend. He started working here. <laughs> so there he was. She said within a couple of weeks, there he is. Somehow he's gone to work at this place. And it just somehow the person he's working with happens to be one of her friends again. It's like so trippy because you are, there is always this one degree. You're, you are connected to these souls that you have a connection with. And, you know, I don't know all the different roles and stuff that you find internally, what your role is with these different people. But there is this degree of, um, uh, what is that? Degree of connect, a degree of connection where you're connected here on this planet. Like you're not that far away from, and I don't know. Maybe it's like Steve and her are the same soul and they keep staying next, close to each other and she just hasn't figured it out yet or something. I have no idea, but I know it's a, it's a deep soul connection when you don't, somebody doesn't fully leave your orbit. They always stay right out there. They're always somewhere around. And, um, you know, like the person who I uh, talked about that I got this soul connection with that I didn't realize I did until later on in life. But then when I started realizing it, when they started showing me and telling me this stuff, then I started having people say, um, oh, I can introduce you. And so I started seeing like, oh my gosh, there's a very close degree here that, um, you know, that, that like your souls are really not that far apart, even though you feel like it's far apart, even though it feels like, you know, like you won't be able to talk to them or whatever. It really is. There's, there's intersections. There's, I don't know. The universe is magical to me. It's, it's just crazy how magical it is. And there is all these different beings that, um, I just saw another thing too. Oh, there is another thing too, besides all this activity in the tectonic plates with the ring of fire a big giant uh glacier thing a big part of uh, the antarctic or something just split a big wall split and went down and i see all that stuff is going to rise all the water like we're in the period of time for this change for the landscape to change we're in that period of time but it's all micro macro because we're also in this period of time of us changing of us um enveloping a new character of creating a new uh a new aspect of self because that is what happens you know but I, to me it's like you reconnect with who you were when you came in before you were burdened by other people's opinions and then you start to develop it to try and please others so you don't feel judged but then once you break free from that and you decide to choose self, then you, um, um, man, I don't know, just bounced my brain to somewhere else, but I don't know. I think you get what I'm saying. I feel like so many times it's just like, it's just, uh, a, an abrupt ending. It's like, well, you got to just fill in the blanks. It's, I don't think it's supposed to be that I'm supposed to tell anybody how to think supposed to be just 
saying things to get people to like to think for themselves to get their own communication going because their own guidance and stuff it's just like this changing the conversation kind of you know just like if you are somewhere and you're listening to someone talk you start having a conversation in your mind you know it, you start I don't know thinking what you would say thinking like I wonder if that's true or thinking about something you had seen like you start having a, a play out in your mind when you are like say you're at a party and you're standing there with a group of people and you're not saying anything but these two people are talking and they get real like talking real serious about this thing and then this person may chime in and you sit there you still have a conversation going in your mind you're still talking you're still answering i don't think very many people just stay absorbed and whatever what this person's saying what that person's saying i think most people start having a, a calculation they start having things going in their own mind their own communication and I kind of feel like that the communication is what's important, but it also gets me into trouble because it makes me feel like or makes people feel like I'm not as connected to them or listening to them. And but you know, and I have to acknowledge that yeah, that's true. I am always listening in my head, and there is it's and it's so loud, like it's harder for me to listen outside of my head. When the conversation is so loud inside of my head. So, but, you know, I guess apparently, you know, we're all at different levels of that too, because I guess some people can't visualize, they can't see anything inside their head. It's so weird. It's like there's people who say they don't think, they don't have anything going on inside their head. Like, I don't know when does something start. You just go through the day just with dark emptiness in your, in your mind all day. And then somebody comes up and talks to you and then it triggers your mind to start working or something. This to me, it seems like I think these people just don't have awareness of what their mind is doing. Because I don't see how they, you, your mind could just be on silence. It would be like that you have turned your back on it. You're not paying attention. Uh, you know, because I don't think I'm that different. And mine just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. Like it's constantly going. And there's always like pictures, there's voices, there's, fuck. <clears throat> and now it's gotten to the point like at night, it just is like, oh my God. There's so, uh, there's so much talking. Even last night I was like, okay, everybody's just got to shut the fuck up. Everybody's got to just shut up and let me go to sleep. And I went into a deep sleep and, and then I woke up and I thought, oh my gosh, it must be morning. God, I was in such a deep sleep. So I had to go over and look at this clock. It was 8.30 at night. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, my God. Oh. So I, that was how the whole night went, I swear. It was like, go back to sleep for a while. And then they wake up all of a sudden. I keep having this abrupt wake up. And wake up all of a sudden. And then it's like, oh, okay, so it must be morning. And then go, and it's like, nope. It's like, not at all. And um, I ran out of the horse pace yesterday, so she's not going to be able to get any until next week, I think. So she'll have a few days without it. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep her on that. And the nail, I got another look. She will not let me touch it. She won't let me do shit. I tried to talk to her about letting me just even put electric tape and tape it back shut because it looks like this piece down here of the nail is there and then the part of the finger that is under the nail is there but the nail this part of the nail so the whole top part is lifted and so it's split off on both sides and it's just lifted and that's where i had found that pine cone in it it doesn't look like there's anything in it and i kept saying about letting me cut it back so it wasn't having so much dangling and then somebody in the comments said you should try and reconnect it. And I thought this piece was already gone, but then I saw yesterday it was there. And then I saw also I had some wire, some really thin wire, like for a garden thing or something. I thought, huh, I could try and like wire it if I could get it to go down and do that. But I don't know. I think it's, she's got it so lodged up now. I think it will hurt. But she won't let me do shit. 
and um, and then try and, and this isn't like having a small dog and just oh we'll just run down the vet. The vet is like 35 miles away, and she is um, she gets really pissed when I try to make her go in the car. Usually I only make her go in the car when we're really gonna go somewhere because I have to force. It's a big or ordeal, and she's uncomfortable. She doesn't like to go in the car. Um, that's why I was like, man, I need a van or something, something where she's not so crammed down in the, cause it's a, a station wagon, but still she's big. And, um, but I thought like if I could electric tape it, just kind of pull it down a little and tape it, maybe it would not be, so, like, I don't know. I know like if, if my fingernail got ripped in half, it would be hurting like a bitch. Like I would be miserable. So I, I don't know. You know, another thing too, I was thinking about the fillings because with the silver and I don't remember, I saw something cause they were talking about, um, I think they were talking about something with the cavities or something. Cause I've got a root canal too. I've got these other pieces of metal in here, not just the silver in my teeth, which I keep on thinking, man, but maybe the silver and the gold was more natural. And then they're telling us, oh, take that out, take that out. <clears throat> and then maybe it's more natural. But also, maybe because of the frequency, oh, this is what it was. It's this guy's video. And he's talking about they're going to microwave us. He said, put a piece of tinfoil in the microwave and see what happens. And that is what, they've got all this heavy metals inside of us. And then there's just something they're going to do that is going to, you know, do something to us. And that's why this guy is saying you've got to be detoxing, getting all the metals, all the heavy metals out of you. And, um, you know, I mean, we're all trying to detox and stuff. It's like, oh, this environment is so toxic. And so, um, but I was thinking, I wonder with the silver, because I don't think I had any root canals back, because I've always been able to hear this frequency. But I wonder if that is part of the reason why is from the silver or something, like it's an antenna. And that is why I can hear the um, frequencies all the time. I don't know, because I hear them all the goddamn time. And then sometimes it'll be really louder and really sharper and harder. But um, anyways, I'm excited to see what's gonna go down with the Miami, because it's got all these people talking. Because all these people are doing, I have seen so many videos about it. Uh, where people keep saying, like, this is absurd for them to say that all this is over some kids in the mall fighting and uh, that all these videos that nobody can show this, but all these people keep saying about that there was these, because uh, you hear, is there some footage that I had seen too from people across the street and they're like, what's going on? What's going on? And they're like, I don't know, but that's gunshot. Like they can hear gunshots. You can hear gunshots. And then of course the police are coming in and saying, Oh, that's not gunshots. That's blah, blah, blah. It's like, they keep trying to, they always want us to, to not trust ourselves. Oh no, it's not that. Oh, it was no big deal. Oh, well, they just called a lot of cops out. Well, it's just, you know, they just want us to go back to our passive. Don't question things. Just go back and think about what you could work for and buy one day, you know, just keep your mind there. And, um, but I, I, you know, as I think that there's going to be so much loss, but it's going to be all loss of things that are taken away that you won't, you don't really need, but you need to see that you don't need them, that you need to let go of the attachment. The attachment is the prison that, and that is what I thought was so interesting. How the Mayans had said that this was how it was leading us into freedom. And that this is all this time of change into freedom. And this is this time of huge amounts of loss. But the loss is to show you, you don't need it. You have to go through the process of seeing something being taken so that you see. Like, oh, I'm fine. I don't need that. Why, why, did I, why was I so sure that I needed that? Why was I so attached to that, that theory, that way of living or whatever? So it's all this process. I'm questioning, re-questioning, looking at things differently, and um, and then seeing in um, in the more positive way. But then the other way, there is lessons. But you can see there's tons of lessons in fear, in in the suffering and stuff. And don't forget, like I said, the universe is looking for all lessons. They don't want us to all be doing the same thing. 
We don't want us to all be thinking the same thing. Oh, and I saw another footage of another person because people keep getting all this crazy stuff up in the sky. And so this one, it looked kind of like one of those things that kind of blew up and it goes out in like this smoke into the sky. And so she was getting footage of that. And she was saying, look up there. It looks like there's a face. And so you're watching and watching. And so as you're watching, there's this other part of the smoke that goes down. And I thought, oh, that's the face she's talking about. Oh, how creepy. As a face, it's like sitting here, like standing back in a hallway or something. And then this goes past and you see their the reflection of their face. And, and so they're standing there looking at you straight on, like... And so you see this reflection of their face. And I was like, oh my God, that's so creepy. And then, um, and then she says, oh, see there, you can see it. And it's up above. There's another one and it's turned a different way looking. And then when I was looking at that one, and then I was thinking, oh, there's another one behind it that you catch a glimpse of that's looking out. It was like the fucking sky must be full of faces looking at us. It was like... I don't know. It's really trippy. Um, but I, I guess, you know, it would all be on your vibration. What you can see. There's so many people are just like constantly. Oh, that's a, well, a lot of people, that's just a hologram. Well, there's so many people getting these, like if, if our government's just putting these holograms up to confuse us and scare us, but at the same time, uh, try and hide the truth and uh, trick us, then you know, it seems like there's two opposing forces at work. One that's trying to tell us and one that's trying to hide it from us. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to see the truth is coming out. And, you know, we live in a supernatural world. And this world isn't what we think it is. And people are scared of stuff that is natural to this world. You shouldn't be scared of aliens, but you got to learn to be respectful like, I think that if people knew that there was more than just fucking um, grizzly bears and mountain lions in the forest, that there's fucking skinwalkers and I don't know, these other things, these pale, pale walkers or something. Yeah, and they look, um, well, there's people who keep saying that they've seen them and they show things that look like them in like scary movies and stuff. And so I don't know. I think if everybody knew that those things are out in the forest, that you're just as likely to find yourself in a portal and aliens going in and out around you all night long, then people would be, I don't know, maybe they would go into the forest less if they knew that it was really a place that you go, you're putting yourself out there of like as a meal, but maybe for a giant, maybe for a, I don't think Bigfoot eats people. But there's a lot of other things out there that do. Dog man. That guy sounds like a creepy motherfucker. He's probably got a whole... He's probably not just one of them. There's probably a whole fucking island full of them. And the, the, that one just happens to come here to feed off of people. Like, because you can only... You can travel around through your vibration. Through the portals. It's like a portal system, like a sub, a sub a subway system or something. But you can only get off on the the you can only get off on the 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 places you can get off. You have to meet vibrationally, and so that just shows you how low vibrations this place is. It trips me out how people are like, "Oh, this isn't hell. Hell is worse than this." It's like what? This is so fucking low vibration. This is such a place where so many bad things can happen. This is um, a place full of pain and trauma and um, uh, challenges. And it's all about learning and growing. It's like a, going into a really hard, like this is, I don't know, I'm not a gamer, so I may be way off on this. This is like going into a Fortnite, you know, this is like going into a hard game going into something that is very challenging. And most people don't even understand the challenges because they're cut off from their soul. They don't see. They're trying to just play the game from a different level. There's all different levels, you know, and this is a huge leveling up. This is a, a level up where people are going to, uh, you know, see things uh, differently. They're going to learn and evolve from the situations and the the 
all of the things that are happening around them and on the planet and stuff. And, you know, another thing too, with the, with like the kids that are born into other places that where they're just, you know, challenged to just survive and they are living in such a different kind of reality than the kids over here even have any comprehension of like I, I don't know I, I feel like like I feel like that the the comprehension and compassion is in one soul if the soul has that as a layer to its own uh its own knowing its own it's like a, if it's a book in your library if it's something that you've experienced or understand then you will understand it. But there's a lot of people here who are just learning certain things. They're just learning certain lessons. Like we're all learning lessons all the time. And so they're just learning things. It isn't a part of their, uh, this will become a part of their DNA then. It will become a part of their inner knowing. But, or some things are also triggering someone's inner knowing so that they remember that they know they don't know until the challenge is there and then they know because they've already been through the experience but it, it, to me it's just like these kids are having completely different experiences than what these other people think and all their experiences are very valid like these kids are finding parts of themselves of saving themselves of saving their neighbor of uh, I mean there's there's huge things that develop in people in all the different challenges that happen. I just, I think it's so strange how people just don't ignore, they don't appreciate. It's not like you have to appreciate someone's, um, you know, the horrible challenges they go through. But, you know, there's a, an aspect to being able to see that those horrible challenges are there for them to grow. And if you go and say, oh, those are horrible challenges. You shouldn't learn. You shouldn't go through that and stuff. That's like, I don't know. It's kind of like going against, like where some people think like about blasphemy and about going against God. To me, that's like going against the universe. That's going against the natural way of things. So, um, anyways, it's, you know, to me, that is going against nature, trying to control it, trying to make it do something that you want it to do instead of getting uh, you know, allowing it to be itself. And look at that so much with micro macro. It has to do with even my trigger. Because, you know, we all just need to be ourselves. We should just be allowed to be ourselves. And, you know, do whatever it is that we feel. You know, and no matter what it is. No matter if it's that you want to color your hair. But color your hair. It's your hair. You know, and maybe you have a strong connection and, you know... And you enjoy your hair being a certain color and you want it to be that color. I think the reason why I've said so much about the hair color thing is just that these super spirits who try and market themselves as being like the leaders in the community of spiritualism and that they, uh, you know, they're all going around packed full of makeup, weird hair colors, just all concerned about their, um, their image, their presentation and the image and the presentation is the other it's the, it's the the worldly part of you it's the part that keeps you trapped in the 3d so to me it's like you're you're marketing yourself as these super spirits yet you are very trapped in three-dimensional imaging so anyways it's just you know my opinion but um and i do think that your hair is your antenna and there's all these studies out now about it i think there's something even out of the cia file it's like a, it's a, uh, an extension of your central nervous system that is like your feelers to your environment. It's probably why I can hear and feel things that other people can't hear and feel. I can feel the ground shaking. I can hear something coming from far away. I can t t tune my hearing in and focus on one thing. I can isolate a sound and focus in on that sound and stuff. I can feel things coming towards me. Like, I probably can feel somebody turn on the road down the street. Like, there is, um, and, and then you get the psychic thing. But then also, you know, like I've said, at this point right now, it's like fucking so much loud. It's so, so noisy all the time. There's so much fucking talking all the time. 
it, it just it wears my brain out. It's like, oh my God, this is exhausting. You know, I've got to learn how to shut it off, to turn it off, to be able to pull my head out of the fucking clouds and pull it into quiet, into peace, because there is so much talking and stuff all the time. So anyways, you know, and then, you know, maybe some people that would be overwhelming and they need to have their hair colored. Like, I don't know. Everybody's got to decide for themselves. It isn't for any, there's no one person out there who has all the ultimate answers that we all need to conform and do what they say. And that's going to be the answer for us all. And that will get us into uh, the heaven that we're all desiring or something. You know, I, I just look at it, it's so different. I look at it so different than so many people. And then it's so many times, like, I just get start, start getting overwhelmed by the visuals that start going through my mind. And so many things, I don't even know how to explain them. But I, just as, I don't know, your, your soul, soul and your energy, you're part of something way bigger, that you're not imprisoned, you're not forced that there's learning and growing and evolving and that's what the universe is always in the process of doing you play a big part there is no death you live by your vibration you're connected so much more to people and things than you realize you are birthed into the the glove to give you the illusion that you have separation so that you can try and formulate your opinion or understanding of who and what you are as a self. Because when you are connected to everything it is, you feel all the connection of all, like you feel like you are joy. So you are joy. You're connected with all other people's joy. So you feel that you are joy, but you don't feel that you are Kelly's joy. You feel like you are joy. So it is a, a process of being able to go in, like get into this game or something to be able to go through these patterns, to go through these, these obstacles to identify self so you can see who you are in the crowd, so you can understand yourself. But then there's a whole other aspect to it of that you come in to play these roles and stuff because there's so much more than just this one life. It's a whole spectrum of lives that become the identifiers of self. So it is, um, it, it is not a, as isolated experience that people get so focused on in this experience, in this isolation. And they think this is all that there is. And there's so much more. This is only one cell out of your whole structure of being. This is only one, one book out of a library of information that you hold inside yourself. And so it's, um, uh, and that is why and through this is that is an important part of it is this reconnecting to yourself, this connection to yourself, to your inner knowing, to your inner knowledge, to you, uh, to this higher aspect of yourself, this part of yourself that has gone through different lives, that has gone through different periods of time, gone through different challenges, has died and come back and died and come back. And you have overcome and you've hurt people. You've murdered, you've killed, you've done horrible things. Like all, because anything, anybody can be pushed into doing something horrible. It depends on the challenges that they, they have to experience. Anybody can be pushed into doing anything. It is, um, it takes the individual you know, to sit back and not be so trigger happy, not be jump on. The more that you sit back, the more you define yourself as a self and rather than just becoming a product of your environment, the more that you can resolve all of your, your impulses and your intentions in order to just become clear. It's a clarity to self to be able to have a, an understanding of how you feel about things, what you see, how you look at things, how you respond to things. You know, that's a big one too, is how we affect one another. Because that is one thing that is really big is that, um, is so much of people's response is anger. It's like we, we become angry when we feel like somebody is pushing us to be different or something. 
And so we have to go in and find where does that anger lie? Why, why, why would I have a reaction like that? Why would I get angry and go through? Because it's linked somewhere inside of us. This link to our anger, to this pushing us where we don't want to be. And it is a buildup over time. Because when you're a little kid and you don't have the same kind of influence or the same capabilities of being able to push back and be able to define what you will accept, then you hold on to that and it builds and it takes on the life of its own. But that is where you have to go through and deflate it and decipher it and be able to deconstruct it to determine who you are. Without all of that stuff, you've got to let it go. It's like you've got to keep taking off these different, these different parts of yourself, these different clothes. It's like it's like taking off. You have all your winter clothes on, and you got to take them all off because now it's summer. So you got to just keep taking things off that you don't need, and so you've got to keep looking at what what it is you do need and what it is you don't need. And that's where you have to be truthful and honest with yourself. But that is where the uh, universe is going to make sure that you have no choice. That you're going to just be able to see yourself. You're going to be able to see yourself in all of your different communications and your different, uh, your different, um, what is that called? Uh, reactions back and forth with people. <sighs> Confirmation. You're the the communication you have back and forth with people that is where you can be able to see yourself and witness yourself that's the parts of you that they're going that you're you are going to make sure that you understand because that is the part you're here to learn and heal and grow from it's the things that you can change but all these things that we go through and we change and we direct this energy is what is the creation of this new age this new way of being this new experience, even though it's always going to happen because we're in the slowed down replay of it happening. We're moving into this space and time. So anyways, now, um, now she has settled, but I feel like, uh, sometimes I'll feel like I'm just keep saying the same thing over and over and over and over, but it is, um, it is important, but I would go listen to that Mayan thing. And I'm gonna go listen to the Edgar Casey thing. Like, ugh. I, I don't know, but that we've seen that earthquake thing this morning already and being like, oh my God, and keep seeing all these different things about how the, it is very um, unstable right now and knowing what's going to happen over on the West Coast and knowing how close things are. But the, the only thing that it, to me, it kind of just keeps giving me hope is like, well, they got to have the government and the money's got to crash. So it would seem like that would crash first before, uh, but all this stuff is happening at once. Like you got fucking aliens showing up at the mall. You got, you know, Bigfoot's all over the place. You got all sorts of creatures coming out. There's goat, like everything is coming out. Like, And I don't know if it's just because our vibration has changed so much or it's just like, you know, be seen. Is it, This is the time to be seen and this is a time for people to get their shit together. Like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll just watch how it keeps playing out. But it is leading us into something better. It's leading us into freedom. It's leading us into a time of living where we actually get to experience living, just pure living, just making choices for yourself, going and doing the things that you want to do and just experience what it is to be alive. So it's going to be a beautiful time, but you know, we do have to get through this, this death of what we allowed into our life. It's like we allowed this disease into our life, although we had no idea that what it was and that we had choices. But now once the choices are made clear to us, now we are making a choice. We are deciding for ourselves. We are the ones who have to decide for ourselves. So, and, you know, even if somebody doesn't tell you the truth, the truth is still out there. So, um, but once you know the truth, yeah, then you're making a decision for yourself. So, and, and, and then if you don't believe in a truth, just go and do more research, you know, just look into things more and, uh, you, you know, you will find your truth and your truth is out there for you to, to experience, to decide 
you know, because that's what life is all about. It's about making choices and experiencing consequences. It's about getting the both sides. It's about seeing, you know, everything you do comes back to you. And that is, and that is going to be more and more and more. And, um, and the girl, you know, who has been staying here, she has got so many good things happening right now. Like a huge wave of good things just came in and hit. And I was like, oh my God, that's such a good sign that she chose her. She chose to love herself. She chose to get better. All it takes is you, your soul, make that choice and uh, waves will start coming in of um, good things. Good things are out there. And, um, but don't forget if you are stuck in that fear and, um, you know, you're enveloped with that, there's lessons for that, you know, and there's lessons for the observer as well. Like we learn, we're learning from watching all this play out. And so, uh, everybody's doing their part and there's nobody who's doing their part wrong. There's nobody that needs to switch and do things differently. Everybody will learn from the things that they're doing. Everyone will learn from the things that are being done around them. So we're in a time period of learning. We're in a time period of all these lessons and then see what you do with them. See what you do with the lessons that you learn. So anyways, um, I will go and well, I will see what this day brings, what this whole weekend brings. It's like, surely, surely. I mean, I thought that was really uh, exciting when I heard that the Bitcoin thing was uh, falling apart. But I knew that, the, I mean, I already knew the cryptocurrencies were going to. Because that is something Charlie talked about too. Is that the only, the only currency that will go forward has to have something that backs it. It's no longer going to be just um, how they had it built was very corrupt how they built their money system it won't be like that it will be like okay we have gold it's worth three thousand dollars an ounce and everybody can buy buy your ounce you can have your ounce you can have your ounce but that's the cost of it if it goes up if all of a sudden something in the world and we think oh well we need all these things and they have to be built out of gold and gold is so worth so much more now it's worth at least five thousand dollars an ounce then your gold will go up that's why the silver is going to have such a huge jump because it's been repressed for so long in order to control like it's it's way too complicated like you have to go in and listen about all this stuff about the economy and how it was created like the whole thing it's like a lot and uh but it's also corrupt and we are going into this global jurisdiction. And that one judge who I said had come out and said that the, the uh, uh, debt was illegal. That would be one of these judges. I had just seen something about that. That we're going to go into this time. It's not going to be like we're under the, the you and the other thing. with the and not, We're not going to be under that. But there is going to be like a like everybody's going to be under like the same kind of jurisdiction it's not going to be we're not going to be divided out in different countries we're going to be more of a human race that's why i said it's going to be more of we'll be able to travel more freely that's why i said about you know, all these people who are going to different countries right now is to bring this stuff up in people and it should get you to lead to well you know i want to be able to move around freely i want to be able to go wherever i want to go not just like, oh, I'm going to kill them if they come to my house. They better not come. That's the fear part. The other part, the other lesson part is like, well, dang, you know, I'm going to start being able to travel around. Well, God, I'm going to support this. Come on, let's go. Free travel, free travel. We want to all be able to go wherever the hell we want to go, you know, and get on that movement. So anyways, we're all going to, you know, play our parts. We're all going to see the things that we're supposed to see. We're all going to grow from the things we're supposed to grow from. And that's just the way it is. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't force it. You can't sit there and try and think, well, if I just learned this one lesson, but what is the lesson? Then everything will change. But what is the lesson? Well, the lesson comes automatically. You don't have to try and figure it out. It will just show up. And it will just come and you'll learn it and then things will change. So you can't, get, you can't force a lesson to come. You can't force destiny to appear before it's ready to appear. That's like divine timing. There's no, you don't have control over divine timing. You don't have control over destiny. Destiny is in a play out. It's it's a movement that's already occurring. And so you can try and look up ahead. You can see ahead where it's headed. 
but you can't control it. You can't make it get to where you want it to be. You can't make it stop places it's not going to stop. You just got to sit and, you know, let it play out. So, anyways, we'll see how all these things play out over the next few days. Um, it does seem definitely like January is coming in hot. I can't believe the Cat Williams stuff. <laughs> like, boy, he is, he is out there just... And I think that there will be more of these people who will just all of a sudden... I think that'll be a part of maybe the whiteout part. Like, you know, these people just keep coming out of the woodwork, saying stuff, saying stuff. And um, the, he's got a lot of people. Like, every video, I swear, is Miami or Cat Williams. Miami or Cat Williams. and um, Or the, uh, the other one, the logs and the all the court stuff from that whole situation. Which to me is like people get so caught up on that one when there's a lot of these, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of these islands. There's a lot of these parties. These people are still carrying on. There's still all these people who are being taken and sold. All that stuff is still going on. You know, just because that one island is gone, <laughs> didn't seem to affect much, did it? Just got people to, to just put all their energy towards this one so you're not paying any attention to this over here because you just focus on this. It's like, well, it's still going on. So islands and parties and all that shit all over the place. Like they go everywhere. And some places they're allowed to do it. Over there on the side of the strip where the star land, they fucking, it's allowed. But I think in Greece, there's something about that. That's why old Tom went there. And it's so weird, too, as Tom's gone. You know, he's been gone for years. But now, that's another one that just came up is Roseanne. She's, I, she apparently is having a new show or something. And uh, she's not having Tom, Tom's woke ass in it. <laughs> she told him, get your woke ass out of my show. And so, all these different kind of dramas. It's like, it's it's all just part of the show. It's, uh, it's part of the thing. Cause Tom's gone. And what was another one, too? They were just talking about somebody who's gone. Like, there's so many of these people who are gone. Uh, you know, or, but we're at this part. Like, we're at the part where it's about to all shift, about to all go the other direction. So, we're, it's really exciting, you know. But we still have some more stuff to go through. Because there's a lot more pain and suffering. A lot more fear and anger. And uh, in the medical, uh, that one's going to be... I'm telling you, that's going to be the biggest one. Religion will be the hardest one for people to break that program. The medical will be the hardest one for people to um, accept. People are going to really struggle with that. And that is where you just got to go deeper into your spirit and know that nobody has really left you. That there is no real death that's not real. And it is sad when people leave us and when we, you know, we want to hold on to people. We want to hold on. And then especially once they're gone, it's like, oh, my God, you don't even realize what you are missing until you want to hold on to something. But this is part of life is being able to learn how to let go and being able to trust and being okay. So it's a part of your your growth. It's, um, you know, it's a big thing to learn, like, okay, well, they left the game. You know, you were supposed to appreciate them when you had them. They left the game, but that doesn't mean that they're, gone out of your existence they're just not here presently in this present well most people who are passed out of the game anyways are right there with you they're stay hang out with you all the time anyway so you just can't see them <clears throat> but as this um this vibration changes as your awareness changes i think that you will start being able to see them we will start interacting with them and stuff i don't know we'll, we'll just see how this keeps playing out like i don't know Maybe it is going to be that all of us who do understand about us, our spirits, maybe the world is going to wipe out. And then those of us who realize that we are eternal, that we're going to be the ones who are left. And then the people, but there's going to be a lot of people who are going to leave on ships and stuff, supposedly. And so if that's supposed to be like around the solar flash time, but the solar flash time, that's past. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff that's still got to go on. You got to just, you know, keep focusing on your spirit. Keep focusing on, like, we're in this game. This is just a, this is a movie. This is just a movie. This is a, a game where you're trying to maneuver through a movie. So, and you're trying to be your best version of yourself. You're trying to, you know, become 
you know, your own superhero. So anyways, that's, that's my opinion. So I'll talk to you tomorrow and I'll tell you my opinion tomorrow. Maybe different, who knows? So I'll talk to you. But was there something else? It seems like there was, I don't know. I don't know. I think I said all this stuff. There's so many things going on. There's so much stuff. There's no way you could cover it all. You'd have to sit there and just do like a news report. And there's so much. And there's a lot of people who are doing that. So anyways, all I can say is that this is a time of change, a time of growth. Don't be scared. It's not an ending. It's a beginning. The thing that is ending is the thing we want to end. We want human suffering. We want uh, this uh, hold over our minds. We want that to end. So, yeah, it's going to be a good thing for this stuff to end. So, anyways, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye.